So 2017 is finally over, and it's been an interesting year for animation. We had some good stuff, we had some meh stuff, and then we had some bad stuff. But that's all behind us now. So I want to share with you all my thoughts about the upcoming animated movies and cartoons in 2018. There's a lot to cover, and I won't be able to go over everything, but I will try to hit up most points. The Incredibles 2. This is what I'm looking forward to the most. The first Incredibles was just so much fun and was an excellent superhero movie. Brad Bird, the guy who directed the first one, will be in charge of this sequel, so things are looking pretty good. I have no idea what the movie will be focusing on, but this is one of my favorite franchises from Pixar, and I'm confident that they will do it justice. You have powers! <laughs> yeah, baby! <laughs> <laughs> Wreck-It Ralph 2. This movie has a subtitle called Ralph Breaks the Internet, and uh, I don't really care for it. They could have just called it Wreck-It Ralph 2, or Ralph Wrecks the Internet, but nah, gotta call it this instead. We don't know too much about this movie at the moment. There's been no official trailer yet, so there's not much to go off of. All I know is that it takes place in the online world. We'll probably see a bunch of references to websites, people acting like jerks on social media, and a scene where the characters look mortified after viewing some dirty website. Now, I had my doubts about the first film, but it was much better than I expected. I'm hoping for the same for this one. Hotel Transylvania 3. This franchise is one of the better animated properties from Sony, but that's not saying too much when you consider the rest of their library. Fortunately, Gindy Tartakovsky is the director, and the guy knows a thing or two about animation, but the premise for this movie just seems… ugh. So stupid. The characters are going on a monster cruise, which is a thing. But hey, at least we get to see a certain character in a bathing suit. <laughs> Okay, Dad, thank you. <laughs> I'm not expecting anything groundbreaking from this movie. It will most likely have crude humor, like fart jokes, but it will also include some fluid animation and cartoony moments, so that's nice. But to be honest, I wish Sony would just let Gendy direct his own movie. The guy has an impressive resume and has pitched ideas before to Sony. Heck, that Popeye footage looked amazing, but Sony keeps keeps opting out for other stuff, and that sucks. How the Grinch Stole Christmas. So Illumination will be making their own version of this beloved Dr. Seuss classic. They've already done the Lorax, and now they're going to put their spin on the Grinch. So far, they only have a few pictures to show, but I don't really like what I see. Why does he look like he's checking out somebody's girlfriend? Seriously, he's got bedroom eyes. <laughs> And the worst part? They originally had a better design, but decided to go with this version instead. Oh, and I'm calling it now. They will most likely have a modern cover of You're a Mean One, Mr. Grinch, and it will be done by, uh, I don't know, Taylor Swift. No Malone. Eh, it doesn't look terrible, just seems boring. But here's a question, why are there so many films about gnomes? Do kids like them? Oh, speaking of which, Sherlock Gnomes, a sequel to Gnomeo and Juliet that no one asked for. Again, do kids like gnomes? Is this supposed to be some popular thing that I just don't understand? The animation does not look awful, but I have no desire to see this film. It just seems pointless. Also, the trailer made a pun that was just terrible. You need a ship. No ship, Sherlock. Early man. Take him away and kill him. Slowly. Ah, idiots. From Ardman Studio and the people behind Wallace and Gromit, this movie looks 
pretty good. I like the jokes, the animation, and the premise seems really fun. I doubt that it will excel in the box office, but I guess we'll wait and see. Batman Ninja, more like Batman Samurai. Seriously, he's wearing samurai armor. I like the animation style of this movie and how the setting comes across as a feudal Japan version of Gotham. I'm looking forward to this one. The Ark and the Aardvark. You know, I swear I've seen a movie about Noah's Ark before. No, not that one. Ah, that's the one, and it sucked. Pretty sure that this one won't be much better. Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. Wait, Sony is actually making something that looks good? I guess miracles can happen. This movie will be about Miles Morales, another character in the Spider-Man universe. I don't know much about him or the comics surrounding him, but the movie itself looks great. Maybe Sony might turn things around with this film, but I'm not gonna hold my breath. Peter Rabbit. It doesn't look that appealing though. Kind of reminds me of the old Smurf movies. Isle of Dogs. Okay, so I said that I'm looking forward to The Incredibles 2 the most this year, but that's not entirely true. I am just as excited to see this movie too. Directed by Wes Anderson, the guy behind Fantastic Mr. Fox. This movie looks amazing, and if it's anything like Fantastic Mr. Fox, it's going to be hilarious too. I don't think I can stomach any more of this garbage. Exactly. Same right. here. Words out of my mouth. Duck, duck, goose. No, 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 I'm just glad that Jim Gaffigan is still finding work. Sergeant Stubby, an American hero. This one's interesting. It's actually based on a true story. Whether or not they will show everything in detail remains to be seen. But this dog fought in World War I and saved the lives of American soldiers. The visuals themselves look... Hmm. Okay, nothing outstanding, but it could be good. Smallfoot. This one's from Warner Brothers, and I gotta say, it looks pretty cute. Also, we got Danny DeVito as a Yeti, a monster. I dropped my monster condom that I used for my Magnum Dong. All right, that's all I got to say about the movies, though I'm sure I've missed some stuff. But let's get to the cartoons. There's a lot of these, so I'm gonna keep my points short. Unikitty looks fun, and I like the style they're going with. The humor appears to be on the random side, but that should work for a show like this. Shira, a rebooted series from the 80s that's getting some love on Netflix. This was basically the girl version of He-Man and featured more feminine traits than its counterpart. Unicorns, pastel colors, rainbows, fabulous mustache dudes playing the good Tar? I do like that Shira is strong and kicks butt. Hopefully, they can put a modern spin on this show while retaining its classic charm. I am Shira! Trolls, the beast goes on. And another Netflix show. This one is based on the DreamWorks movie Trolls. I really enjoyed the visuals from the movie, but the cartoon lacks any of that aesthetic. Regardless, I'm sure that little kids will love this show. Summer Camp Island, from one of the writers who worked on Adventure Time. This show looks weird. Like, the characters are definitely different, and that's not necessarily a bad thing. It might just take some time to grow on me. The voice acting and writing is cute, so there may be something to this show. Just gotta wait and see. Craig of the Creek. Ah, this one looks so cute. Kind of reminds me of Steven Universe, which makes sense because some of the folks who worked on that show made this one. Craig of the Creek also reminds me of Clarence and how kids just go off and do their own thing. I'm looking forward to this one. Should be fun. 
Rise of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles There's very little info about this one. I like the style of the characters. Pinky Malinky Hey, a new show on Nick. Looks meh. And got that random humor thing going on. Gonna have to wait for an actual episode to fully judge this one. Glitch Text Another new show on Nick. There's nothing really out about this one, except a wiki page saying that it's being made by the guy who made Fanboy and Show. Oh, no. Disenchantment Man, Netflix is just blitzing original content right now. This one's about some characters in a fantasy world. That's all I really know right now. Besides Matt Groening, Gron Groning, Grosh, Magosh is behind it. Constantine This one reminds me of the Castlevania series that was on Netflix last year. It doesn't look as good, but it doesn't look terrible. And stories about demons fascinate me, so this one might be pretty good. Close enough. Good to see JG Quintel back in business. He was the guy who made Regular Show, and now he's making another series. But this one will be for an older audience. Regular Show was one of my favorite cartoon shows, so I have high hopes for Close Enough. Boss Baby. Back in business. Eh, who cares? Big City Greens. Hey, Disney has a new show too. And this one's got some great talent working on it, such as Rob Renzetti and some of the folks who worked on Harvey Beaks. I like the colors. I like the character designs. I really think that this one might be a winner. Apple and Onion I had my reservations about this show. I thought it looked pretty basic. But after watching an episode, I actually think it's pretty good. I enjoy the writing and the interaction between the characters. The designs are still kind of meh, but I think that this cartoon might grow on me. Reboot <laughs> Oh my god, they freaking ruined it! And finally, we got Watership Down. Remember this movie? That old animation about rabbits getting mauled and ripped apart by other animals. It had a very serious plot about life and death, and struggling to survive while keeping your wit and avoiding betrayal. It even had somewhat of a political air to it. Basically, it's a pretty heavy movie, and I don't really understand why Netflix wants to make a version of it that's less violent. The violence is essential to the plot. but. Hey, maybe Netflix can make this work. Alright, so that's about it. I'm sure I've missed some shows and movies, but that's mainly what's going on in 2018. There's some pretty good stuff to look forward to, but there's a few stinkers as well. But hey, at least there isn't anything truly terrible. Oh, no!